everybody, this is Ray Harvey with Access to Sue. Thank you for joining us on our basic video about building tables. This is a follow-up video of part two in a series of two. In the last video, we talked about some of the basic terminology and some of the basics about tables. In this video, we're going to discuss keys and indexes. Thanks for joining us again, and stick around. So keys. What is a key? A key is a unique value that identifies a single row in your table. It can be a single column in your table. It can be a combination of two or more columns in your table. If it is a combination of two or more columns, it's said to be called a composite key. The primary key in this patient data table is going to be our patient ID. I've got that set up as a number, and it's going to be auto-incremented by our database so that it's guaranteed to be unique for each row. The primary key in your table is the primary index of your table. Okay, So indexes, what are indexes? Well, indexes are pointers to rows or groups of rows. When a table grows, database software can use indexes to find the row you want faster by using the index. So in this table, our patient table, we have a primary key or a primary index on our patient ID. But we also want to think about how else might we be using this table. Uh, in a doctor's office, I might imagine that the, uh, the, the people that answer in their phones and, and the nurses and the doctors would need to look for a patient perhaps by last name. So, so perhaps we'll put an alternate index or a second index in the table on last name to help with those searches. So let's talk about what happens when you have a large table that's not indexed. We want to look for a row and the software is looking for record patient ID 688. It just had to scroll through 688 rows in the data table to find the record we're looking for. When this happens, this is called a table scan. The database software starts at the first row of the table and reads until it finds what you're looking for. Let's compare that to using an indexed read. Okay, I've drawn here a balanced tree, or attempted to draw <laughs> a balanced tree index to our, to our data table here, our patient's table. We start at the top on the root node. So in our so in our example here, we're looking for patient ID of 688. And we start at the top in that root, what's called the root node. And we're looking for the value that is highest but lower than the value we're looking for. In this case, it's the value 600. That points to another set of index values where we do the same thing. 650 is the highest without going over the value we're looking for. And we follow this structure, if you will, all the way down for 680, 680, 688, and that bottom row there, um, our leaf node row, if you will, of indexes, points to the actual data value. The terminology there about the index structure is really not important. What I want you to take from that discussion is the relative number of reads between the two methods in the table scan and our unindexed table, the table scan had to read through 688 records to find the record we were looking for. Whereas in the indexed read example, it had to read much, much fewer rows. And that's why indexes, or that's how indexes speed up reads. Now we need, you need to be careful though. You can't just index every column in your database. And the reason for that is every index column has an index structure just like this. So what's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is on the data input side, when your customers are inputting new data or modifying data that is indexed, this entire index structure has to be built as you're inputting rows or modifying rows. You insert a new row, it's got to go in here and find where it belongs, the index structure, and insert records into the table and insert records, multiple records, into the index structure. So too many index columns in a table can slow down the data input and modification side of your applications. You have to, there has to be a balancing act that you need to, to consider. Think about how the table is going to be read, so index the columns that you think you're going to search on, but don't index too many so that the data input side doesn't get too slow. So now that we've discussed some of the considerations for building a single table, let's revisit the idea of a database. A database is a collection of tables. They're all related to one another in some way. 
such that they describe some larger situation or thing that you need to store data about. Now, Access, as well as all the other databases I mentioned at the beginning of the video, are called relational databases, and that is because the tables in the database are all related to one another in some way. And when we say related, we mean that a column in one table is related to a column in another table. For example, we're going to start with our patients table here, okay? And we're going to say that, well, in the real world, let's say, patients go into a doctor's office to get visits or exams, okay? So each exam is going to be connected to a particular patient. And we're going to do that by making a relationship between the patient ID and both tables. So we will know that exam number one over here belongs to patient number five. And exam number two belongs to patient number 10, let's say. And we'll build those relationships between all these various tables. So how many tables you need in your database, of course, is going to be determined by how complex the situation is you're trying to describe in the real world and, and you're trying to model in your database. So this pair of videos is the beginning of a series in which we're going to explore building tables and building a database that's going to describe a doctor's office examination data a database. Okay, we're going to keep track of their patients and their exams and their uh, lab tests and diagnoses and things of that nature. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it, and we will see you next time.